Hi, I'm your host, Mr. Coleslaw, and the hyperactive mouse you see on screen is Hawkbit Alpha, your demonstrator. We're here to help you all get started in playing the free indie flight simulator known as YS Flight. For this, we'll be using the 2015 Windows version. This guide is primarily for people who've never played a flight simulator before and need to be introduced to the basics. In this video, we'll be covering the startup process, control scheme, and basic flight using the default F-18 Super Hornet. The default mouse cursor controls will be used, as this is what most people who start playing YS Flight without a controller tend to use. First off, let's talk about simply starting up the game. When you first install YS Flight, you'll see that you're given a choice of three different files to start the game with. Direct3D, or D3D9, OpenGL1, and OpenGL2. The only difference between the three is the level of graphic detail each adds to the game. Yes, you did hear that right. Even though this flight simulator has very Atari Jaguar-esque graphics, it does have some level of detail. They break down as follows. Direct3D is low, OpenGL1 is medium, and OpenGL2 is high. Once you've decided which version is best for you, use it to start the game. Since Hawk's laptop is quite weak, this video will be presented using the Direct3D module. Once you've started the game and reached the main menu, Look to the toolbar at the top and select Option. From there, click on Joystick slash Key Assignment. Here, we can see a full list of every keyboard and mouse control that the game has set by default. You'll want to familiarize yourself with some of the items in the list before you get to flying. If you want to get started quickly though, here's a list of the absolute must-know controls for basic flight. By default, moving your mouse cursor around the screen controls your plane's pitch and roll. More on that later. Z and C turn your plane's rudder left and right respectively. X centers the rudder. The rudder is primarily for steering your plane while it's on the ground. Q and A, like a question and answer, Q and A adjusts your plane's thrust up and down. More thrust means more power for gaining speed. G raises and lowers your plane's landing gear, the wheels that the plane rides on while it's on the ground. For Windows users, the F keys 1 through 10 on the top row of your keyboard are your buttons for switching camera views. Depending on your computer and keyboard design, you may need to hold the FN key at the bottom left corner of your keyboard to use the F keys properly. All of the other important keys we'll cover when we get to them. These are what you have to know immediately. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Now, for the main event of this starting video, we're going to fly for the very first time. Once you've finished reviewing the controls list, click OK or Cancel to head back to the main menu. Once in the main menu, you'll see a button that says Create New Flight. Click that and you'll be brought to the Flight Creation menu. Here, you can select your plane, the map you want to fly on, and a whole host of other things. Let's start by flying with the default setup, an F-18 Super Hornet taking off from an airbase in Automoti. To start, click the Fly Now button. After clicking the Fly Now button, you'll be presented with this screen a replica of the plane's controls that you can use to test your setup before flying. You'll notice that moving the mouse cursor around the screen moves the plane's joystick. Holding Q moves the throttle level forward, and holding A moves it back. Pressing Z or C moves the rudder pedals left and right in increments, and pressing X centers them. Once you're done here, simply click on the screen or press the space bar to get in your plane. Welcome to the cockpit of the F-18. Before you take off though, let's quickly talk about some of what you currently see on your screen. Yeah, I know, you want to get in the air now, but this is important, so listen up. The green vector text in front of you is your plane's heads-up display, or HUD. At the top left portion, you'll see a readout of the various weapons and payload your plane is currently carrying. We can ignore this for now. At the left side of the HUD is your airspeed indicator, which tells you your current speed in knots which, for scale, 300 knots is about 345 miles per hour, or 557 kilometers. On the right side is your altimeter, which reads out your current height, or altitude, from sea level in feet. At the bottom of the HUD is your compass, which indicates the direction in which you're heading. Below the airspeed indicator, in the bottom left, you'll see three rectangular bars. For now, ignore the one furthest to the left and notice the two next to it. 
The first bar indicates your throttle level, and the second, which should currently be three-fourths of the way full, shows your plane's remaining fuel amount. This F-18 is carrying a fuel tank, so for this particular flight, the fuel meter shouldn't start decreasing immediately. Okay, enough explaining for now. It's finally time to launch. Hold Q until your throttle bar reaches maximum, and you should start gradually speeding up. After you've reached about 170 knots, start pulling your plane's nose up by moving your cursor towards the bottom of the screen. You should then lift off the ground. Once you've taken off, press G to raise your landing gear. Congratulations, you're finally in the air! Move your cursor towards the bottom of the screen to make your plane go up, and move the cursor towards the top of the screen to make it go down. To roll your plane left and right, move your cursor in either direction. Combining the roll and pitch axis is how you make an in-flight turn properly, as you can see here. To increase your thrust further, press the tab key, and you'll activate your plane's afterburner. Keep in mind, though, that A, this is only available on certain planes, mainly the fighter jets like the F-18 you're in now, and B, afterburner mode burns through your plane's fuel load much quicker than flying at standard military power as you were before, so it's best to be careful about when you use it. Press tab again to switch back to military power. So, now that you're in the air, just fly around for a bit. Get a feel for the game's flight physics. Every plane handles differently, but for now, you can learn the game's general style of physics with this simple setup. Be sure not to let your plane end up pointing towards the ground, or you'll probably end up crashing soon afterwards. Also, don't try to fly steeply upwards, because this will result in your plane losing most of its speed, and falling out of the sky. Something you definitely don't want to have to deal with right now. Well, you may be enjoying your time in the sky, but sooner or later you'll have to come back down. Now you might be panicking a little bit without knowing how to actually land your plane, but it's not actually that complicated, so don't worry. If you've flown really far away, try to find Misawa, the airport you took off from earlier. You'll want to come in at an angle though, because you'll want to align your plane with its runway. You can see an example of a basic approach in this video. If you're near Misawa though, great! In either case, try to line your plane up as straight as possible with the runway at Misawa, and slowly lower your throttle to zero using the A key. At the same time, notice your airspeed indicator. You might be going too fast to safely land at the airfield, and running off the end of the runway in YS flight has severe consequences. If this is the case, and it most likely is, press F several times to lower your plane's flaps. These are the surfaces on the rear of the wings that help reduce the plane's speed. Generally speaking, you don't want to land at a speed higher than around 190 knots. If you're still far over that threshold, and you need to slow down quickly, press B to extend your plane's spoiler, or air brake. The status of these control surfaces can be seen on the bottom right of your HUD, below the altimeter and to the right of the landing gear's indicator. Assuming these conditions are all right for you, and there are a lot of conditions, all you have to do now is lower your plane's landing gear by pressing G and put it down on the runway, but make sure to leave yourself lots of room to slow down. If you already deployed your air brake earlier, your landing gear brake should already be activated, as they're not bound to the same key by default in YS. If not though, press B now to start slowing yourself down while on the ground. You can see whether or not your landing gear brake is activated below the gear down indicator in the bottom right of the HUD. If you've landed successfully, congratulations! And if not, just try it again with the Retry Previous Flight button on the main menu, keeping all of these steps in mind. Alternatively, you can go to the Simulation tab in the main menu toolbar and select one of the landing practice training scenarios. Sooner or later, no matter the method, you'll surely get it. This covers everything for the basics of YS Flight. We hope that this video is useful to any new pilots out there and that you stick around to learning more about the game. This is Mr. Coleslaw, signing off.